What's going on, y'all? So let's what's going on everybody so i am back for another what it is video um <clears throat> once again i'm just winging it okay because the notes are like all over the place and i wanted to put this out yesterday but i told y'all in the other videos that was going on i needed to get my rest um because i thought i was coming down with something and then my acid reflux was messing up it still kind of is and, you know, some people, y'all give suggestions. Them suggestions really don't work for me, okay? And I, I'm just a, I'm just another breed, bitch, okay? I just don't know what's wrong with my throat. But, you know, it just don't want to play right, okay? The stuff will be acting right for a couple of months or so. And then it'll get that one week that it'll just be trash, okay? The only plus side about my acid reflux uh, acting up is within that period of time, I really do be losing weight, okay? Because I can't eat shit, you know what I'm saying? You know, a bitch done dropped a few pounds. I ain't, I ain't suggesting that you should do it that way or whatever. But it just so happens that's what happens. Um, I Something told me to get on the scale. So I got on the scale. And I was like, damn. Because I, I did feel a little light. You know, even though it's just a few pounds. I was like, ooh. Okay, you know, I'll take this. But I still want to eat something and keep the shit down. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go eat me some little soup or whatever. And um, see if that'll stay down. But yeah, bitch. This shit... I just gonna have to live with it for the rest of my life. It's just a mess. Hopefully, once I lose a little bit more weight, it'll get. Cause you know, when it comes to acid reflux and a lot of these other things, they be like, "Well, once you lose weight, okay, bitch, you say that like I can lose weight the next day and I'm gonna be all to the good." No, I get it. I get it. So I'm on this process. That's one of the reasons why I started on this weight loss journey. Um, so yeah, that's that. You know, um. Because I don't have major issues. One, The major issue that I have health problem wise is this acid reflux. And I just, uh, it's hell on earth. If you don't have it, thank your lucky stars and thank God that you don't. Okay? Because it's a nuisance. It's a nuisance. All right? And I got one of the rare kind where it's, oh, I'm just getting into details. It's bile. Okay? Bitch, I got gallstone. Listen, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. Okay? I mean, but we keep it real. Are you telling me keep it real with these people, huh? Hi, hi, hi. You know, whatever. You know, happy belated birthday to the uh, Jay-Z. Anyway, moving on from that, what else been going on in my life? So today, I went and got my papers and went through the little orientation for my new position, you know, and I'm very happy about that. Thank you once again for the support. You know, I keep you guys updated. Thank God I don't have to go to work and see this, uh, my old supervisor for another week or so, you know, because she's on vacation. I just got off vacation. So, hey, our paths won't cross until another week. So, you know, I'm, I'm good on that. Moving on from that, what else been going on? So let's get into these topics, okay? It's cold as shit out here in Chicago. What's new? You know, I got my boots. You know, <laughs> bitch, who get geeks over boots? Me, bitch, because I brought them my goddamn self. You know, I be real, being an adult, you amaze yourself sometimes. Like, listen, I really went out here and put getting these electronic shit over, you know, I put that to the side and I really went out here and got, you know, real life necessities and shit like that. You know, I'm adulting like a motherfucker up in this bitch. Okay. But hey, it is what it is. When you got to grow up, you got to grow up. Um, moving on from that, let's get into these topics. Like I said, the topics are probably going to be all over the place because I'm just going off of what you guys posted. Um, this is just like a fun video, I guess. Not necessarily fun video, but it's not too serious or whatever. We're just going to be talking, okay? And so, you know, one of the first things that happened this week, we had the death of um, George uh, H.R. Is it George H.W. Bush? George Bush daddy, okay? He f passed away. He was 94 years old. I remember when um, both him and his wife, Barbara, Barbara, or is it Laura? Well, him and his wife, okay, you know, um, I don't want to wish death on nobody or say somebody is dead and they not, you know, um, they both were sick around the same time and they both, you know, were old and up in age or whatever. And they didn't want to go to the inauguration because they both were sick. That's what the doctor said, you know, so they said, but, um, she passed away and he just passed away afterwards. So, you know, it is what it is. He was a very controversial person. Um, I don't have much to say about him. I did see, I didn't watch the funeral, whatever. Um, I'm just not into stuff like that. 
And I'm not into a lot of politics stuff because at this point, the way that this administration and our government and things have been going, it's just a lot of, it's just a lot of stuff that's, you know, it makes you depressed to even think about it. And it's like, why do you even want to get in politics? I don't have the patience. I don't have the energy to want to go back and forth, to want to slander this person, slander that person. Oh, yeah, that dude that was Trump's lawyer, his ass got convicted. So that's, you know, something out of there. And he put out there that, you know, he was out here taking campaign funds or doing something under Trump's, you know, told him to do. I said, uh-oh, uh-oh. You know, shit heating up a little bit, though. I will say that. It's heating up a little bit. But moving on from that, I did see when Trump came into the funeral, okay? That was the main clip that kept on being shown. It was two clips that kept being shown. It was when Trump came into the funeral, and it was also when George W. Bush came into the funeral, okay? So on that first row, you have Jimmy Carter and his wife, and then you have... Hillary and Bill, and next to Bill was um, Michelle Obama, and then there was Barack Obama, then there was Melania, and then there was Trump. Um, when Melania and Trump came in, you know, they, hi, you know, how you doing? And then Trump shook, <laughs> shook Barack's head, and Michelle Obama was sitting there. They was, they was fine before he got there. Before they got there, it was all like, you know, yeah, this is, this is kind of fucked up. What's you know happened? And everything, and we just gonna be here to lend our support and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it's all like that. And then Trump walk in, and then you see that shadowy figure on the sidelines, and you like, oh hell. And then when <laughs> Michelle went from to, I said, bitch, Michelle was over. She did not want to shake that man's hand. Okay, if you read her book, if you read her book, I'm still in the process of reading that book. Is thick as fuck, bitch. Okay. Um, but anyway, I got the audio book and I went and got the actual book, you know, so yeah, I had to support, I had to support, but she still, she has not forgiven Trump for what he did and the reckless things that he was saying about the birther comments and things like that. And when she put it out there about how, you know, you put my family in danger. I have two young kids. You put my family in danger when you said shit like that. And it made me think like, wow, you really are correct on that. I didn't even think about it that way, you know. And so it's understandable. And she had it all on her face. She said, bitch, I ain't finna play nice, okay. Shake your hands, sit your ass down, don't try to talk, okay. Hillary didn't acknowledge them bitches, all right. Hillary didn't acknowledge them um, Bill was just sitting there like, are you going to, are you going to reach over and try to shake my hand or not? You know, what, what, what are we going to do? I said, Bill, just sit there, just sit there and look, look forward. You know what I'm saying? And then when Bush came through and he shook everybody's hand and he went over there and gagged, <laughs> what is with Bush and his candy giving it to Michelle? This is the second time we've seen him give Michelle some candy, but well, I didn't seen him. You know, their relationship is kind of cute or whatever. So, it is what it is. Um, I have nothing else to say about that. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about that whole uh, thing. Um, moving on from that. Um, I didn't speak on it last week because I just knew some more information was going to come out about that Alabama um, mall shooting that happened on Thanksgiving. And this black guy who just came back from military, he was a veteran. Okay, he's 21 years old. Uh, Emerdis or something like that. I'm Enamic. I'm sorry for messing up his name, but it begins with an E. And all I know is that from what they told us at first was that there was a conflict that happened in this mall and a suspect, you know, pulled out a gun and shot a 12 year old and an 18 year old. And then they assumed automatically that this veteran, before they even knew that he was a veteran, okay, and Assumed that he was the one who pulled out the gun. He was the suspect. He was the one doing the shooting. And they shot him. Okay. Then it comes out. It comes out like back to back. It didn't really waste no time. Probably a day afterwards. They realized or later on in that day. That no we shot the wrong person. He did not have the gun that you know discharged these um, bullets. And I was like oh so we didn't go through ballistics or anything. Y'all figure that shit out real quick. Somebody fucked up. Okay. Then comes to find out he didn't do shit. He was helping people trying to get out the way of what was going on. The suspect has gone and y'all just shot the wrong person, killed this man, 
and then come to find out this man wasn't trying to shoot nobody in that um in that area or nobody period he got shot in his back and his neck and his head multiple times okay but he got shot in the back. You know, he was going this way. Somebody was behind him shooting. Okay, his back was turned. So, you know, it's a lawsuit about to happen. You can't tell me no different. Um, And it's fucked up. Once again, another innocent, a truly innocent black man um, that is undeniably innocent. Because, you know, it's, <sighs> you can have all the evidence in the world. And, of course, they won't be held accountable for shit. But, you know, this man was truly innocent. He had his life taken away from him. Okay? A veteran. A veteran at that, you know? So, it, it's just going to be a bunch of mess that's going to happen. And I'm looking forward to see what this fallout is going to be. Like, he, that family needs justice, like, right now, ASAP. Okay? Um, speaking about that... The Sandra Bland um, documentary came on this past weekend, I believe, or earlier this week. I didn't watch it. Uh, I had set it to put it on record because I missed the date that it was supposed to come on, but it's coming on um, later on. I think it came on either the other day or whatever, but I, I got it on my DVR, so I will watch it and see what that's about. Everybody remembers what Sandra, Bl Sandra Bland, the lady who was actually from Chicago, who was in Texas and she was pulled over and being forcibly arrested um all this stuff that happened and she went to jail and she wound up dying in jail and you know they tried to rule it a suicide but she gave off they say she gave off no signs that you know she was suicidal or anything like that it's just a whole bunch of unanswered questions that we do not believe a lot of us still don't believe that this woman committed suicide in this jail cell um, so I guess, you know, in the documentary, you have her own words being spoken because she also made videos and she spoke out on a lot of issues, especially black issues. And I think women issues as well. And so that will be probably a good look to look at, you know, so I'm looking forward to seeing what's that all about. Even though she said some things about, you know, some little controversial things, I'll let that pass for now. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what that documentary is all about. Um, if you are HBO Sports, like I said, I think I mentioned it before, it's three episodes to it. Look at um, Shut Up and Dribble. Remember when Laura Ingram told LeBron James that he needs to just shut up and dribble or shut up and play ball or whatever? And so, um, Jamel Hill, she executive produced and narrated this whole uh, little TV series, uh, mini series. Like I said, it's three um our episodes that came on hbo sports that's basically given the history it's called shut up and dribble given the history of how you know sports stars and sports entertainers and other people mostly sports of course um either put their work voice use their voice in a political way for the people or just sat back and just let things happen and, you know, was more so about the commercial side of things and just getting their paper, you know what I'm saying? So it was a really, really good documentary, really good um, little mini series. I learned a lot of stuff that I did not know, and I was like, oh, okay, this is really nice. I suggest you guys check it out. It's three parts to it, and they're all an hour long or less, you know? So check that out, and it's on HBO Sports. Um... There was a lady in Maryland. See this? You want to do good and be a good Samaritan out here in these streets and help people. Like, let me tell you something. We have a real bad issue with homelessness that happens out here in Chicago. When I'm on my way to work, um, especially under uh, Lower Wacker Drive sometimes, uh, under the bridge or whatever, we see there are some homeless people especially in the morning they have all their stuff lined up on the wall and mostly by the wall where the vents are so that they can keep warm enough especially in this cold weather and i mean they have everything it's like makeshift little homes and everything right there and you see them sleeping and it always just you know it breaks my heart to see stuff like that to see people struggling and then i can't do nothing to help them and you want to i'm the type of person that i don't even carry cash but Every time I get cash or some change in my pocket and, you know, around my job, you have people that's panhandling and they're trying to get money or whatever, and you can tell that they're really struggling, I just give it away automatically. And it'd be literally three 
three to four of them literally right by each other. So I try to give, you know, equally amount to everybody. You know, if I'm going to give one, I'm going to give you all something, you know. And that's just the type of person that I am. And when you have situations like this that happened in Maryland to the lady who um, this guy was out there, you know, on begging for money. And she, out the kindness of her heart, let her window down to give the man some money. And she wound up getting stabbed to death. That's scary as hell. That's scary as hell. You asking for help and she was helping you and you took her life for what reason? Now, the only thing that I can think of was he had to been on drugs, okay? The person had to been on drugs and he had to been high out of his body for you to do and take advantage of a person and take a life like that. Because what was the point? You were getting the money. What else was you trying to do, okay? That is scary, that is scary. You want to help people. You want to do good. And then sometimes that shit just backfires. And it's just like, you know, but don't let stuff like that deter you from helping people. But it's just a sad situation. I've never really heard of nothing like that. So when I heard it, I was like, wow, that's crazy. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. Um, okay. So the Grammy nominations and Oscar nominations came out today and yesterday. So with the Oscars, I believe Black Panther got um, a couple of nominations. Uh, Spider-Man Into the Universe, the Spider-Verse. I want to see that. I got to go see that. Uh, what else came out? Um, I know that uh, A Star is Born got nominated. Gaga got nominated for um, Best Actress, I believe. And then... Uh, uh, John Washington, he got nominated for Best Actor for Black Clean, Black Klansman. Uh, I have that on hold. See, that's the beauty of working at the library. You get the new shit, you know, you know when there's stuff coming out. So you just put yourself on the hold so you can be on the list, bitch. So I got that. I'm waiting for that to come. Okay, so I can watch it. Um, I haven't even seen A Star is Born yet, but I'm, I'm going to watch it myself. I heard good things about it. I heard good things about the soundtrack as well. Um, Gaga also got Grammy nominated for one of, what is it called? Shallow or whatever. The song from the soundtrack. She got her Grammy nomination for that. I think she got at least four. Okay. But, um, yeah, there was some snubs here and there. Uh, with the Oscar talk, let's just go there. Let's just go there for a minute. Kevin Hart was set to um host the Oscars this year. Okay. I didn't feel no way. I, I wasn't jumping for joy. I mean, okay, a black man or a black person is up there hosting it. That's cool. Um, That's a win, I guess, for us. I, I don't know. You know, if we're not doing Oscars so white or whatever anymore. But um, it just made me worry when I heard that he was supposed to be up there uh hosting like what exactly was he gonna get up there and do you know you finna make jokes to cater to them and you know who i mean by them you know these ain't the same crowd that you're used to you gotta censor yourself a little bit or what he gonna get up there doing and all that stuff but it still wasn't enough to make me want to go and watch okay um i don't really watch the oscars i only watch the clips online or when I see it comes past on Twitter or whatever, and y'all tell, uh, you know, the Twitterverse will put out there who won. So you ain't even got to watch the shit. I can't sit through all of that. Um, there's just some award shows I just really can't do, and that's one of them. And so in the midst of him celebrating and people being happy that he's being a host, all of a sudden, I, I just look online and people was talking about, you know, Kevin Hart got some homophobic tweets or whatever. And I said, bitch, what? What? Now, listen, I didn't get, I wasn't really 100% shocked because there is something in everybody's past, okay? Something in everybody's past um, that's out there that can probably do some damage to them and they probably forgot about it. And we live in a time and period where Y'all, a piece of hair from my eyelash. An eyelash just got in my eye. That's why I keep on. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's still there. I, if my eyes start watering up, that's what's happening, okay? I just want to get through this video. But anyway, we are in a time where everybody's really sensitive. And, you know, you have to be politically correct, okay? You have to come correct regardless, and you just have to be aware of 
a lot of people around you and certain issues, certain topics and things of what to say and what not to say. And some of it is warranted. Some of it is not. Okay. Do I feel, you know, somebody went through and they found some of his homophobic tweets from like 2009 or 2011 or whatever. Mind you, I had no idea that this was out there. I wasn't, I didn't start following Kevin Hart until probably two years ago or last year or whatever. So I didn't know. Okay. But I'm not surprised. And the only thing that I'm kind of not here for with Kevin Hart is when he get called out on a lot of things. He don't go ahead and take accountability for what happened, okay? Like, when he got called out for having the Indians and Cowboy birthday party and people were complaining, and not necessarily complaining, but trying to give you the history of why this was not, can be seen as a bad idea, can be deemed and seen as offensive to Native Americans, and you had even Native Americans also lending their voices and trying to explain how this is as offensive cowboys and indians the cowboys killed the indians okay you know the indians were an indigenous group to the americas who were killed okay their lands and everything was taken away from them all right and that's basically what cowboys and indians are the cowboys supposed to kill the indians okay that's the gist of the game you know that's offensive especially in this day and in this climate and if you know the history all right granted I understand if you're thinking of the fact that, you know, oh, this is what I used to play with when I was a kid and all this stuff. But once again, we're in a different climate. We're in a different time period. You know, you can look up things and you can understand. And like I said, a lot of people are sensitive. But in this case, I feel as though they had a right to be because that's a whole. And, and, and my thing of it is when it was presented, all you talking about is basically trying to dismiss it and double down on why you did it. And. It's, it's, it's that, that like, it don't matter type of attitude. I don't give a fuck type of attitude. It don't work for a lot of things. And it just make you seem so much more of an asshole, especially when you have people from that culture, people from that race, you know, Native Americans or people from their nationality, from their ethnicity or whatever coming through and trying to explain to you what's going on and why they feel the way that they feel. All you had to do was say, well, I didn't know, or it was a little um, mishap of me. I should have thought a little bit further, and that's what it is. You didn't have to come out and be negative, but then try to say, I ain't trying to be here for this negative bullshit. Let's just practice positivity. But you're putting out the negativity. So you was putting out the negativity on that part. Now, when it comes to these homophobic tweets, yes, everybody does have the past. I'm not the type of person, if you seem remorseful and you understand where you're coming from, and what you did wrong. And I see that from when I start following you and when I look back a little bit further, you have not been really that problematic. And I see that you are out here trying to do good and you're helping things. Yes, I do believe people can change to a certain extent on certain things, okay? And so all he really had to do was, even if you don't want to say, my apologies. All you had to do was say my bad, you know, and I would have been fine with it. My bad. I didn't, you know, I was young then. I was an immature person then. And, you know, I've changed and you can go back and you can see my growth or whatever. Then the issue comes with him not wanting to apologize. Okay. He basically bounced around the fucking um, topic and talking about people want to shed negativity and all this stuff while he in his bed and all this shit. And I'm like, bruh, so you really not going to acknowledge this stuff? Then you put the caption and saying that you're not going to apologize for tweets that, you know, happened when you were in two uh, years ago. Old tweets that was like eight, nine years ago. And you don't, you know, you feel like you've already matured and you've grown and all that stuff. And it's all positive and all that. And I get that. And on the one hand, I respect the fact that he stood his ground for that moment and said, y'all not going to force me to do something because then the Oscars came out and they said, either you apologize for these tweets or you're not going to host. Okay. He doubled down and said, he's not going to apologize. Then he said that he had already addressed this. I said, when this happened? Because I never knew about this, but you know, you still could have just said my bad for those that didn't hear it in the back or who's new to me, whatever my bad. That ain't how I felt. You know, I was on some fuck shit, you know, back then it is what it is. But on the other hand, it is his prerogative and it's his right. If he didn't want to apologize, I would rather you not apologize than give a fake ass apology when you don't really mean it. Okay. And that's how I feel. That's how I feel um, when he put out this tweet saying that 
he he decided to step down from the uh, host in the Oscars, okay, on his own accord because he didn't want this to be a distraction to everybody else in that event, all right? And then he said he apologizes to the LGBT community or whatever and then said he's sorry for anybody that he hurt and offended. So you said you weren't going to apologize. You doubled down on it again and said that you weren't going to apologize. Then you back off and you say you're not going to host and then you apologize. Like, I would have just rather you continue to say that you're not going to apologize, okay? Because that's your original stance. And once that original stance is what you truly mean, if you ask me, okay? And I'm not one of the ones that was, like, in my feelings about it. Because, you know, at this day and age, you, I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of these goddamn celebrities got some homophobic tweets or, or you know, said some things in their past or whatever that's fucked up, okay? I wouldn't be surprised. And it's just be like, okay, I just ain't got to deal with you no more. It ain't nothing for me to be, ooh, I'm so pissed off and all this shit. I just don't want to fuck with you like that no more. You know, it did, but if he addressed these in the past already, I can understand the frustration with him not wanting to apologize again. But again, you have a new audience. You are being embraced by new sets of people, all types of people. And so therefore, maybe they didn't hear that that time. So just reiterate and say my bad. You know, uh, I fucked up. That was an old me. I was young, dumb, and immature. You know, you guys see my growth, and it is what it is, and just move the fuck on and say, bitch, I ain't got shit else to say about it. Now, if you want to continue to be mad, that's on you, okay? That's what I would have been cool with. But, you know, he did what he had to do. How y'all feel? I know. And see, this is why, this is why I hate when certain things like this come up because I get tired of seeing comments about saying that the LGBT community is sensitive because sometimes, and I will have to say, sometimes, sometimes my community does do a lot. <laughs> and I be sitting here like, why are you fucking mad? Okay, why are we mad today? You know, <laughs> it'd it be a lot. It'd be a lot. Moving on from that, Grammy nominations, okay? So... Drake was nominated, of course. The Carters was nominated. I think they got three nominations and all this stuff or whatever. Um, the only nomination out of the Carters, like, I'm to be quite honest, I'm surprised everything is love got nominated. No shade. You know, that's not a diss or anything. Uh, I just didn't know that the Academy was checking for it. You know, um, they, they play the Carters all the time, but it is what it is. Or if they have been for the past three, four years, they've been playing the shit out of them. But, okay. But... One domination, best performance of a song or whatever for summer. I said, bitch, they performed summer one time. One time out here in Chicago, the second night that I did not go. Okay? Y'all performed that shit one time. And it was that good to get nominated. No shade. No shade. All they did was sit on this. Okay, you know, and to be quite honest, summer is my favorite song off of uh, Everything is Love. I don't care what nobody say. That's my favorite jam. But, you know, I had literally looked at that and I said, okay, <laughs> if that's what y'all want to do, <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> but, um, all right. You know, shout out to her. I think her got like five nominations. Like I said, Lady Gaga got nominated. Cardi B got five nominations. Oh, it's going to be some motherfuckers that's going to be pissed as shit if she wins. And I'm pretty sure she leaving out that motherfucker with at least one. Okay. So y'all just be prepared to be in your feelings or whatever. Don't let this shit get to you. Okay. Um, Queen wasn't nominated. I don't. I thought at least she would get one or two nominations, but none. Okay. Uh, Drake was nominated. J. Cole's album, K.O.D., didn't get nominated. I said, what the fuck? Kendrick Lamar got nominated. He also got nominated for Oscar, too, for um All of the Stars or whatever, that song. So, yeah. Uh, who else? Toni Braxton, you know, she got nominated for, I think, two or three. You know, and um, who else got nominated? Chloe and Halle got a couple of nominations. I really want them to win some, but you know, I'm I would not be surprised if they don't because they've been playing them. They've been playing them. They put out a bomb ass CD, okay, and they've been playing them at every award season, every award show. They keep nominating and keep nominating, keep nominating, and they don't get anything. Somebody asked me on my Instagram, or um, Chloe and Halle like getting the Jasmine Sullivan tr treatment. And what I know what they mean about that is Jasmine Sullivan has been putting out quality work. 
Jasmine Sullivan can sing her ass off. Jasmine Sullivan can sing better than a lot of girls in this industry today. And yet she is not treated as a mainstream artist. Um, she don't get the proper respect that she deserves. She don't get the nominations that she de deserves. And she don't get the awards that she deserves. Okay. So, I mean, I don't want to say that they're getting that treatment because they're right out the gate. You know, truly, truly out the gate now. But Beyonce kids, I get them, um... I get them another year and then I'll reevaluate that if they still get snubbed another, you know, time around or whatever. But, um, yeah, but I'm proud of Beyonce kids, you know, uh, she did a good job with them. She really did. Let them do what they had to do. You know, it is what it is. What happened to the little white girl that was on her, uh, on her label part hood? That look, y'all just forgot about her. And just, it seemed like it. No shade, Parkwood. Y'all be watching or whatever. Answer my question. Is she still on the record label? Listen, I don't sound right and I don't sing like that. But I can do a little humming and a little hymning or something. You know, I can. You know, I can do a little hum or whatever. So if y'all need some background vocals or whatever, I can do that. You know, I can, um fake song right if you need some shit or whatever okay i'm pretty sure you got some bomb digital editors and all that stuff up there but bitch i can do something you know what i'm saying hook a sister up i'm just saying bitch <laughs> it is what it is it is what it is bitch i've been trying to get in the park world for a minute now okay on some i really want to learn type of shit because i really want to learn but moving on from that one day somebody gonna hit me up moving on from that um what y'all think about the grammy nominations who you feel got snubbed uh, who you looking for? I really, to be quite honest, outside of the people that I mentioned, I'm probably missing a few people. Oh, Janelle Monet got nominated for a Grammy as well. Um, out of, I'm probably missing a few people, but I'm just not hype about these award seasons. This whole award season, and I'm talking about the entire award season, I have not been hyped about it, okay? Not at all. Not at all. So, I'm probably going to be watching the Grammys just like this. I'm going to be on Twitter, okay? We got to get our jokes and shit off, okay? I just want to know who performed it. That's all. That's all. Um, Four years later in Flint, Michigan, I just want to let y'all know, still ain't got water. That's fucked up. There's this thing on the internet called black fishing, and somebody wants to know, is it an issue for non-black racists to physically alter their appearance? And for Yes! That's blackface. I don't care what you say, okay? That's fucking blackface. If you trying to turn yourself to another ethnicity and you deceiving people on purpose, bitch, Rachel Dullesaw, you saw all the fucking backlash that she got from that, okay? That is fucked up. Bitch, I call that blackface, okay? I think that, oh my goodness. Thank you for bringing this comment up because I was looking at the real and this topic came up, okay? And they was talking about this one girl. And they showed her before and her after picture, okay? She from Sweden or something like that. And she's like a beauty influencer on Instagram and all this stuff or whatever. She literally turned into a brown-skinned girl from a pale white girl. And I'm not trying to talk about her skin, you know, make fun of her. I'm just saying I'm trying to do the compare and contrast. It literally looked like two different people, okay? And when she got called out on it, she did say that she was a white girl, all right? Adrian and fucking Jimmy Mai was on that goddamn stage basically trying to make heads and tail of whether or not this girl was white. Mind you, when Tamara read this thing off, she said that the girl said that she was white. I said, so what is the confusion? And then Jimmy Mai. Jimmy Mai is basically trying to compare this person or people out here black fishing, turning into a whole nother ethnicity, you know, a whole nother color. Um... Trying to compare that to when men do makeup. I said, bitch, you got to be out your get. Now, usually I be here for Jenny when she be getting on some of these hardcore subjects, okay? I be like, all right, put your little influence in, put your opinion in. Some Most times you make sense. But this one, I was looking at the TV like, bitch, are you crazy? Bitch, are you serious? I said, girl, what the fuck is going on? I know she is not really out here trying to, you know, play devil's advocate with this and trying to defend this and trying to compare and contrast apples and motherfucking oranges. I said, girl, if you don't get out of here, that episode really pissed me off. And then you got Adrian who sit there looking dumb all the time with her little 
cop girl. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, congratulations to Little Rock, Arkansas. They elected their first black mayor ever. You know, I wish you got to put his name. Uh, okay, Travis Scott. Travis Scott and Kylie Jenner. You know, they two together. They cute little family, whatever. Somebody put out a picture and it went viral. Uh, looked like Travis Scott was kissing on some girl. Okay, they was like, "Oh, bitch, he out here cheating on Kylie." Come to fucking find out, the real it was fake. It was put up by some dude talking about something he was doing a social experiment or whatever, and showing how you know people can go viral and be gullible and all this stuff or whatever. You basically dressed up as Travis uh Travis uh Scott. You dyed your hair like his. And you made it seem as if, you know, he was out here cheating. I don't give a fuck if you was thinking that this was a social experience so that you can get... See, we're talking about this person. I won't put his name out there. But we're talking about this person and that's what they wanted. That was their end game, to get attention, to go viral. And they succeeded in that, okay? You succeeded in that in the vein of messing up somebody's relationship, okay? Y'all saying that, what if Chris Jenner put this shit together... I don't think Chris Jenner would do that to her own uh well. <laughs> Let me stop right there. But I'ma just say that was fucked up. Okay, you don't play with people livelihoods like that. All right. That all attention and good attention, okay? Why don't you go about the right way of trying to get notoriety? Like, come on. That that was stupid. Um, the whole thing with Cardi B and Offset. <sighs> Cardi B and Offset broke up, okay? They been broken up. She put out there saying that, hey, girl, listen, we fell out of love. It ain't his fault. It ain't my fault. I don't hate the nigga. That's my baby daddy or whatever. And um, we just not together no more. And it is what it is. It's going to take some time to get a divorce. But, you know, we all to the good. You know, we just fell out of love with each other. And, you know, maybe we get back together. I don't know. But it is what it is, you know. So, there you have it. And then this motherfucker posted underneath the uh, Instagram and said, y'all won. As if we, the public, is the reason why or made you cheat on your wife. Constantly. From before you even got married, you was cheating on this motherfucker. And right before this happened, some cheating scandal came out, which they said was a lie. Um, These girls were trying to say that... um. He was trying to have a threesome with this rapper girl named Cuban Doll or somebody. And then she came out and said, bitch, I don't even know that. And he don't know me. I don't know that nigga. So I don't know what you're talking about. And then some other hoe who slept with Offset came out talking about some. What's her, I'm not going to say her name because that's what she want is recognition. But whatever. Bitch, you will never ever get me on no fucking video crying about fucking another nigga that ain't mine when he married or fucking a bitch who met. You know what? Let me shut up. Because I was about to say something. Because <laughs> of burning me. <laughs> Had thoughts about breaking up a marriage. Let me stop. And it's not what you think, okay? But it kind of is what you think, but it ain't. Okay, so let me stop. But I would never do it, okay? I would never do it. You know, I once had the thought about what would it be like to be the sad bitch you know, like that, okay? But I would never lower myself like that, okay? I would hold too much value in myself, bitch. If I'm going to be in some relationship, I got to claim your ass. You're going to claim me, okay? That's what it is, all right? I don't do sad pieces, okay? You don't throw me to the side like a chicken McNugget, bitch. You don't do no shit like that, uh-uh, okay? If that's the case, just be my motherfucking sugar mama, okay? That's all that you need to do. Bitch, be my sugar daddy minus the sex, okay? That's all you need to do, all right? You know, have a pretty young thing, just sitting by you like this. <laughs> what you need? <laughs> I can't do that. You're going to have to give me some ends. No, 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 no. Let me stop playing. Okay. I will never play myself like that. Okay. But you will never get me or anybody else that I know on fucking camera crying about fucking up a relationship. And you not. And baby, first of all, we probably didn't even know that who you were. And we probably didn't even know that you fucked around with Offset. He done fucked around with so many people, I'm pretty sure. Okay. 
So at this point, you came out as if you the catalyst, as if you the one that really broke them up when you probably wasn't even that, okay? And you're crying about it. I didn't know their marriage was that serious. And, you know, this a humbling experience and all this shit. Bitch, you just want the fucking attention because ain't nobody know about you. Then nobody need to know about you. And who the fuck does this? Girl, get the fuck on. But, um... The Cardi, I'm not surprised that they broke up. They got together real fast. They got married real fast. And, you know, with the cheating stuff, a motherfucker get tired eventually. And I guess she got tired. We don't even know the real reason why they broke up. But I'm pretty sure that played a part into it. And it is what it is. It's nothing for me to be like, oh, I'm shocked or whatever and I'm hurt. No. It, we who, who really didn't see it coming? Okay. They lasted longer than I thought they would, to be quite honest. Um, Little baby culture, cute though. She cute, though. They released a picture, or at least I should say Cardi released her little picture, and she's a cute little baby. Um, Layla Ali, she fucked around and hit an elderly pedestrian in the parking lot of a store or whatever. She bagged back, and that little Instagram post, she basically made it about her, you know, my child was in the backseat of the car, but he's okay, and mentioned basically hitting the person one time. I said, well, damn, bitch, how is he feeling? Is the um person that you hit okay? Is he still alive? Is he in the hospital? What's going on? Girl, that took me out. It really did. It took me out. Um anything else I need to speak on? I feel like I've been talking for a while. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's my thought on it? Okay. Tony Braxton did Red Table Talk. I haven't been talking about it because I had fell off of it. I'm all the way caught up now. And that show is so good. That last, the last Red Table Talk, when Shay was talking about forgiveness and her brother was on there. And when he was started talking about that father and he was about to break down, baby, Ashley just broke down in tears. I said, girl, because I had a similar experience. I probably told this story before and I'm trying not to get in my feelings because every time I mention my uncle I, I I you know I start to tear up a little bit but when he passed away we were not on speaking terms and I told y'all like that's my that was my best friend that was my home that's the person I went to when I came out he was the first one that knew that I was gay in my family or whatever and he took me to my first club my first gay club got me my first real drink and all that stuff he did a lot of first with me okay and so we fell out because I was just so upset at the things that he was doing and how he was pushing people away and how he was just putting his life away. And we had gotten to it over something. Um, and I just really wasn't here for the way that he was acting. And so that kind of pushed me away. And I never got the chance to actually, you know, I was, we, we, I was holding things against him. Okay. Knowing that he was sick. And I never got a chance to correct that. I never got a chance to forgive him before he passed away. So that episode really, really, really fucking touched me. So that's why I broke down crying when I was looking at it. I was like, bitch, please. Okay, you can't be doing this to me. This is not This Is Us, okay? So Coney Braxton was on there and she was talking about divorce. And she was talking about her relationship and how, you know... Um, basically it broke apart because of the money issues and she wasn't able to bring in the money like she wanted to. And she, at that time, because she had already in place in a, a prenup about, um, alimony, he receiving alimony and she felt the way a little bit about men receiving alimony and all that stuff, but then corrected because she said at that time she was thinking men is the new bitches and all that stuff, but she corrected herself and said, you know, it's the same thing if, the man was making more of the money in the um, relationship, then the woman would get the alimony and things of that such. So, you know, it's, you know, um, some things were said and then Carrie, Carrie out of nowhere, he come through and was just like, uh, no boo boo. I'm not here for a lot of things that you said on this show, but I mean, you can do you. I'm not here trying to bring this stuff up. And, um, we had this in place. I didn't have a divorce lawyer. That's one of my mistakes that I made. I didn't have a lawyer. I let her basically dictate everything that was going on, you know, and that was stupid on my part. Okay. And it's men and the new bitches things. And then we can discuss this alimony stuff. And if this is that, I said, oh, Carrie had time because baby, he had a lot to say. If you saw it, how did you feel about her statements? And how do you think 
it was Carrie right to come out and say what he said. Um, I knew once I saw the actual episode, I knew <laughs> that it was going to happen. Once I read it, I was like, yeah, I can see why he came out and said something. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, oh, yeah, on BT, they canceled Hit the Floor, okay. Um... It was it, it was it was trash. I looked at the first two or three episodes and I could not do it. Actually, I looked at two episodes and a half and I could not do it. Um, it, it just really wasn't my um, cup of tea. So it was just trash. But anyway, um, that's basically all that's going on right about now. The things with the uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta and the Nene vs. Portia shit, I'll talk about that in Real House of, uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta and stuff. The whole shit with Solo Lucci and Alexis, I'll probably mention it in the next Love and Hip Hop. I really don't care, okay? We seen the shit that's going on. We seen the back and forth. It's all stupid if you ask me. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of you guys' week. I'm about to go look at my show, okay? Our show is back, all right? You know... Um, Married to Medicine do come on tonight, but I'm about to go look at Love at the Lockup first. Y'all gonna get those reviews too, okay? But you gonna get Love at the Lockup first, okay? Love at the Lockup season two is back, boo boo, and Ashley will give you the review later on tonight, you know? So y'all enjoy y'all weekend. Please be safe. Please be warm, okay? And I will see you guys later. Peace. <laughs>